Today, we will look at privacy as it relates to browsers. Just so you know what to expect, this video is not a how-to guide on setting up your browser, but I wanted to give some philosophical points to consider as you browse the internet. I have provided some resources in the description of this video that will go into the how-tos, and if we need to, we can possibly do such a video in the future, but this series does not focus on mechanics as much as the mindset. So let's go ahead and jump on in. We will look at four key points. The first is choosing a good browser or browsers. Next, we will want to talk briefly about VPNs and Tor. Third, we address various plugins. And finally, we will talk about tweaking the settings in your web browsers. On the topic of browsers, the market is slowly shrinking. We only have a few key options these days as most web browsers are based on Firefox code or Chromium code. The majority being the latter. As of this recording, Edge is its own browser, but that is slowly being wrapped into Chromium. Safari is also independent, being managed by Apple. Within these limits, we see the popular browsers Edge, better known as the best browser to download a better browser, and the 900 pound market gorilla, Google Chrome. Firefox is generally the number two browser, but still has a shrinking market share when compared to Chrome and other Chromium-based browsers. Safari is rarely used, only occasionally used by the small number of Apple users, and Chromium is a popular browser among Linux users. And Brave is a newer browser that seeks to solve the problems with some ad distribution with built-in ad blockers. Brave is also based on Chromium. The final browser to mention here is Tor, which is the official browser to be used on the Tor network, and that is based on Firefox. So which browser to use for your privacy? The best browser by far for privacy is Tor, particularly if you use it to connect to Tails or Hunix, but it does have its limitations. The first is with Tor, you never ever log into a website with your personal credentials is that will instantly de-anonymize you. It is also very slow since it is built to hide traffic through three separate handoff relays around the whole world. It is the perfect browser for general research, web stuff, and that does not require logins, and it totally hides your IP while online, but be aware that anything you may download with Tor and open with your computer could unmask you. You can grab the Tor browser bundle for Mac, Linux, Windows, and even Android. Though it is more recommended to use Tails or another Tor configured distro, as these also mask your computer fingerprint. The next best browser to use is Firefox. While there have been some questionable things about Mozilla, the company behind Firefox, the browser is open source and highly customizable. The reason it is the best browser for general computer use is the wide under the hood customization through the about config screen and the massive amount of privacy focused add-ons, which we will discuss later. Brave is another browser that is good for privacy. Now, if you follow my channel, you'll know I have some reservations about this browser, but it does indeed deliver on its promise to block most ad trackers without any difficult configuration, which is the negative of Firefox. Finally, if you run a Mac, Safari is limited in many areas, but Apple does take privacy seriously. And in most of the recent browser innovations, like blocking auto-playing video, ad tracker blocking, have all been innovations from Safari. If you happen to use a Mac, there is no shame in using Safari as part of your strategy, as we will get into in a few minutes. Now onto the worst, Edge and Chrome. While Chrome is the king of all browsers, it is the worst browser to use. First, there are a lot of proprietary code that seems to send a lot of data back to Google, though we do not know much about what is actually being sent back. Also, if you sign into any Google service on Chrome, the browser automatically signs you into Chrome by default, and that means all your tracking history, instead of being stored in an easy to erase cookie on your computer, will be stored on your Google account on their servers instead. Though they say you can erase that data, does it really become completely erased from their company? Well, no one is able to confirm that. In essence, only use Chrome for the bare minimum of what you have to and nothing more, and use other browsers for everything else. 
Now Edge is attached to Microsoft and does similar data collection, but it does seem in its current form to be less intrusive than Chrome. But time will tell what happens after the switch to Chromium base is completed. Tor and VPNs. We have already touched on Tor, but let's explain a little bit more. The network was created for anonymity and it successfully achieves that end. There have been people who use Tor and have been demasked, but it was not a vulnerability in the Tor network that caused such demasking. It was things like accessing personal accounts via Tor and non-Tor connection, hence never log into anything attached to your real name when using Tor. There are a few other methods used as well, but they were beyond the scope of this presentation. The way Tor works is by creating an entrance node that connects to your computer and an exit node that connects the site you are accessing, and in between those two nodes is a third one which transmits the encrypted data between the two nodes in such a way they cannot see each other. It produces a layering effect, which is why the Tor logo is an onion. The multiple connections makes Tor slow, so it is not super ideal for high bandwidth use, but these factors combine together to make Tor totally anonymous, but not completely practical. VPNs have become the latest rage, and there is some need for them, but in many ways it is kicking the can of privacy down the road to the next company, rather than completely solving the problem. To understand why, we have to go back to what a VPN was originally created for, connecting to a remote office. I first used a VPN as a college professor when we had the VPN to access our network drives from the home computer. It works by creating an encrypted tunnel to the network and allowing you to use your resources as if you were there. While there, any internet traffic is recorded as coming from that office, not your house. That is the principle that VPNs use. On the downside, the ISP cannot see your internet traffic, but the VPN company can. If they truly do not keep logs, you are safe, but if they do, they can see absolutely everything you are doing. This is why a VPN is either really good, such as NordVPN or private internet access, or really bad, like Facebook's attempt to create a free VPN for their users, or anybody who wanted it really. In general, you will never want to use a free VPN because if it is free, you are the product and they are likely monetizing your browsing data. On the upside, a VPN will convolute the data being collected by marketers because when they try to harvest the IP data, they see every computer at once and the data becomes useless. So by everyone using similar servers, the end website cannot figure out who is who and you are safe from being viewed and tracked by marketers. Also, many VPNs like private internet access will block out the ad tracking scripts on their end so they never even attempt to track you. Ultimately, a VPN can be a part of a privacy strategy, but it is not the silver bullet as some people claim that it is. If you have come to this point and decide you need or want a VPN, please check my description and use my affiliate links down there to pick one up. It is a great way to help support this channel. Plugins and add-ons. Plugins and add-ons extend the function of your web browser. They are a double-edged sword and need to be treated that way. Some of them are malicious and can compromise your security and privacy. Some of them are even look-alikes, pretending to be a good add-on when they are not. But if you get the correct add-on, you will be helping your own privacy online. In general, you never want to just start grabbing plugins to see what cool things you can do, as that will invariably lead to you picking up some application written by a bad actor. But if you stick to a few official ones, you will be doing good things for your privacy. The best plugins for privacy are uBlock Origin, but be careful to get the official one and not one of the several lookalikes. The plugin will let you block ad trackers on most sites. You can also turn it on or off for certain sites if you want to support your favorite creators by letting ads display on their videos or web pages. Hint, hint. Another one for privacy is for ad trackers is the Privacy Badger, which is distributed by the Privacy Awareness Group Electronic Frontier Foundation. A good one for protecting the transmission of your data is HTTPS Everywhere, which will make sure that any site you access is sending all of the data through the SSL version of the site and not through the unencrypted form. Another add-on to consider is NoScript, which will allow you to control which pages run JavaScript or JS. 
So JavaScript is a client-side programming language, which means it runs on your computer after it is downloaded. It is the most insecure and compromisable part of the internet and how almost all cyber attacks are executed through online. But failing to run JavaScript tends to break nearly all modern websites. No script will allow you to determine where JavaScript is run, which JavaScript is run, and will allow you to set granular control over running JS on individual sites. This is a good step for protecting your privacy when you are visiting unknown websites. Browser settings. The final step is to look through your web browser settings. The first step nearly every user should do is disable third-party cookies. These are tracking scripts that are not directly from the websites you visited, but from their affiliates instead. Nearly all ad trackers are third-party cookies, so blocking them is important. Look at your browser's default search engine. Most of them go to Google or Yahoo, neither of which are particularly good for your privacy. While we are at it, you should also avoid Bing. Set your default search engine to one of the two best privacy engines, StartPage or DuckDuckGo. I personally prefer StartPage as the better search engine because it gives you Google results, which are objectively good. Well, except for this latest craziness of men can have periods. But regardless, Google does have good search results. StartPage gives you those without leaving any of your data on Google servers. DuckDuckGo is a completely independent company and does not collect your information when you use the site. Another privacy setting you can make on all your browsers is to erase all data when you close the application. This clears all of your history and first party cookies. Your downside is it will not remember your login cookies, so you will need to keep logging into any service that you might otherwise not need to log into as frequently. You can, however, set some websites to retain their login cookies, so if you do need to do that, that is certainly a good logical step. Also, unless you absolutely have to, never use the browser accounts to sync your data. These tools all send your data to a cloud. Even though it is encrypted, it is better that that data is not there at all. Firefox also has more detailed tweaks that can be made through the About Config menu. Check the Private Internet Access Firefox Privacy page in the description for more details on that. A whole video could be done on just those settings alone, but that is also why Firefox is the best daily driver. In those settings, you can disable microphones and cameras, GeoIP location, JavaScript, and a number of other privacy invading services as well. The final culmination. After learning all the basics of these principles, the final thing we will want to say is that privacy online will require multiple browsers. You should ideally have at least two web browsers on your computer and more if possible, particularly if you are not able to isolate different computers for different tasks. Any service that you may need to log into, like Amazon, Google, Microsoft, Facebook, should be done in different browsers that always delete the data on exit. Some progress has been made for isolating data on these services, such as ICE applications on Linux, which I do for banking computers so that none of my banks are aware of any of my other banks. Additionally, you should have Tor installed in your computer for general research purposes, random web searches, or to look up that funny rash on your chest. Ew. But you should also have a general purpose browser for everything else that is random. So what do I use? I use Waterfox, a Firefox derivative which stays logged into my YouTube account but only on a media PC for viewing videos and that is not connected to any other computer in the office. I also have a Firefox set up to monitor my various account websites for various services. I have Decenter, which is a derivative of Brave that I use for many multi-purpose things. As for Tor, I have Hoonix and Tails in the office for times I need access to Tor. Not to mention all the services I have on my phone that root everything through Tor as well, but that is a discussion for another day. So now that we have made it to the end of this video, hopefully you will have a better understanding of the mindset for separating tasks into different browsers, and also that you should have the resources to make that happen. Let me know your thoughts on all these points in the comments down below, and don't forget to check out the affiliate links for VPNs if you are in the market for one of those.